Welcome to the History of Simple Things, where we delve into the fascinating history behind the little things that shape our world. In the modern world, keyboards are everywhere. They are the primary interface between humans and computers, allowing us to communicate, work, and play in the digital realm. But have you ever stopped to wonder why the keys on your keyboard are arranged the way they are? The ubiquitous QWERTY layout, which has been around for over a century, is so familiar that many of us never question its origins. In this video, we will delve into the history and evolution of the QWERTY keyboard layout, exploring how it was developed, why it became the standard, and how it has adapted over time to remain a critical tool in our digital lives. The QWERTY keyboard layout, an omnipresent tool in modern life, is so embedded in our daily routines that many of us seldom consider its origins or the reasoning behind its specific arrangement. The story of QWERTY begins in the late 19th century and is intertwined with the development of the typewriter, a revolutionary invention that changed the way people communicated and processed information. The creation of the QWERTY layout is attributed to Christopher Latham Scholes, a newspaper editor, printer, and politician from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. In the 1860s, Scholes, along with his colleagues Carlos Glidden and Samuel Sowell, began working on a machine that would become the first practical typewriter. Their prototype, completed in 1868, was a rudimentary device that typed on paper by pressing keys each of which would strike an inked ribbon to print a character. The early typewriters, however, had a significant problem. The mechanical arms, or type bars, that struck the paper would often jam if adjacent keys were pressed in quick succession. This flaw necessitated a solution to improve the machine's functionality and reliability. Scholz's solution was to design a keyboard layout that would minimize the likelihood of jams. By placing frequently used letter pairs farther apart, he reduced the chances that the type bars would collide. The QWERTY layout, which Scholes patented in 1873, was thus born out of necessity rather than optimal design. The name QWERTY comes from the first six letters in the top row of the keyboard. Scholes's typewriter, marketed as the Scholes and Glidden typewriter, was eventually manufactured by E. Remington & Sons in 1874. It became the first commercially successful typewriter and solidified the QWERTY layout's place in history. The adoption of the QWERTY layout was not immediate, nor was it universally accepted. As typewriters became more common in offices and businesses, the need for standardization became apparent. Typists trained on one typewriter needed to be able to transfer their skills to another without relearning the layout. Remington's early dominance in the typewriter market helped cement QWERTY as the standard, despite its initial flaws. Other layouts, such as the Dvorak Simplified Keyboard, proposed in 1936 by Dr. August Dvorak and his brother-in-law, Dr. William Dealey, claimed to offer more efficient and ergonomic designs. However, these alternatives struggled to gain traction due to the widespread establishment of QWERTY and the significant cost and effort required to retrain typists. Despite its somewhat haphazard origins, the QWERTY layout has proven remarkably resilient. The advent of computers in the mid-20th century saw the transition of typing from mechanical typewriters to electronic keyboards. The familiar QWERTY layout made this transition smoother for users who were already accustomed to it. As personal computers and later mobile devices became ubiquitous, QWERTY remained the dominant layout, a testament to its entrenched position in the world of typing. The persistence of QWERTY can be attributed to several factors beyond simple inertia. One is the vast network effect. The more people use QWERTY, the more valuable it becomes to others. Manufacturers of keyboards and electronic devices have little incentive to deviate from a standard that the vast majority of users are familiar with. Additionally, 
The cost of changing to a new layout, both in terms of retraining users and modifying hardware and software, is substantial. Another factor is the evolution of touch typing, a method where typists learn to type without looking at the keys. The QWERTY layout, while not optimized for speed or efficiency, became the foundation upon which touch typing was built. Typing classes in schools, typing tutorials and software have all perpetuated the layout, creating generations of typists who are proficient in QWERTY. The digital age has introduced new challenges and opportunities for the QWERTY layout. With the rise of smartphones and tablets, on-screen keyboards have become prevalent. These virtual keyboards often employ predictive text and autocorrect features, which can mitigate some of the inefficiencies of the QWERTY layout. Moreover, the advent of voice recognition technology offers an alternative to typing altogether, though it is unlikely to replace traditional keyboards in many contexts. Interestingly, the QWERTY layout has seen variations and adaptations to accommodate different languages and alphabets. For example, the Azerty layout is used in French-speaking countries, and the Quartz layout is common in German-speaking regions. These variations maintain the basic structure of QWERTY, while making adjustments to better suit the linguistic and cultural needs of their users. The story of the QWERTY keyboard layout is a fascinating example of how an invention can shape and be shaped by the forces of technology, economics, and human behavior. It highlights the complex interplay between innovation and standardization, and the ways in which practical solutions to immediate problems can have lasting impacts on society. The QWERTY layout, born out of a need to prevent mechanical jams, has become an enduring fixture in our digital lives, demonstrating the power of historical contingency in the development of technology. As we look to the future, it is likely that QWERTY will continue to be a part of our daily lives, even as new input methods and technologies emerge. Its story is a reminder that the tools we use are not always the result of deliberate design for optimal efficiency, but rather the outcome of historical processes and practical necessities. The QWERTY layout, with its origins in the 19th century, remains a key interface between humans and machines, a testament to the enduring influence of early technological decisions. The QWERTY keyboard layout is more than just an arrangement of keys. It is a symbol of the history and evolution of typing technology. From its creation by Christopher Latham Scholes to its establishment as the standard through the dominance of Remington typewriters and its persistence in the digital age, QWERTY has shown a remarkable ability to adapt and endure. Its story is a fascinating chapter in the history of technology, illustrating how practical solutions to specific problems can have far-reaching and lasting impacts. As we continue to navigate the ever-changing landscape of technology, the QWERTY layout stands as a reminder of the enduring legacy of early innovations and the ways in which they shape our interactions with the world. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.